Hi guys, welcome back to my channel Spare Parts and today I'll be reviewing set number 75208, the Yoda's Hut. This set came out in the year 2018 and retailed for $30 and let's see if this is worth it. Here is the first look at the set. As you can see it is a pretty small set, retailed for $30 so it's kind of in the smallish side of a Lego Star Wars set. And I think it looks pretty cool at first glance but let's take a closer look. This set also has a lot of play features for the price. I'm really surprised at that. For $30, you do get a lot. Seems like a common theme with my videos. Sets with lots of play features. But anyway, let's start with the minifigure play features on the front. So the first one is you can kind of make the scene where Luke is jumping through the trees for his, like, training. And the way you do that is you place Luke up here on top of this little tree area. As you can see, there is a... Oh, carrot came out. We'll get to that. There is a gray jumper plate, dark gray jumper plate, that you put one of his feet on, and then you just stick him up there. And then there's this lever here that you push down on, but before you do that, I forgot, you have to connect him to this, this thing. There's like a rope that you connect him to, and then you kind of, I'll get it so you can see, kind of press down on this, and then he just kind of dangles there. I don't really know. It's it's a weird feature. It It's there if you want to use it, but I don't think it's very effective. It's just kind of like him just jumping off the top of a tree and then just dangling. I don't know. It's kind of weird, but it's there. And then moving on to the back, the set is very modular with its play features. So there is right here, for example, there's this weird like brown thing, and that actually can come out and you can put it at the front because there's these Technic pins and Technic holes that you can connect it to. And you stick it right there. And this thing is actually another another thing that can launch Luke into the air. I don't know why. The set is obsessed with that. But anyway, this one is more like a lever. So you like push down on it and then he flies up into the air. So what you do is you put him in between these two green pieces right here. Just kind of stick them there. And he just kind of stays there. And then you press on this. Oh, man. It, it doesn't work very well. Like, I guess, there we go. He, he kind of jumped in the air. I don't know what the point of it is. It's just, like, I don't... I mean, you can get some air with it. It's cool. But it's, it's just weird. There's a lot of features like that on the set. Going back to the other side of the build, there are some more play features back here. First is you can kind of move these things around to, like, the front to have like a more complete view from the front it it looks nice i'm glad that's there actually because it kind of makes the set look bigger and looks better on shelves this way so i really appreciate that i think that's a great feature i didn't need to add that and another thing you can do here is you might have noticed this box that just has this clear piece sticking out the bottom and this is supposed to represent when luke is like levitating random objects while he's training and you can actually put luke here because he also does like this handstand thing with like one arm and you can actually do that scene here with this like clear little handle and what you do is you just put him on that and then he's doing like a one-handed handstand it's super cool i'm really glad that's there and you can also spin his head i'll look at we'll look at this later but you can kind of spin his head to represent like him meditating and stuff super cool anyway moving to the interior of the hut the roof does not come off at all so you kind of have to just like put your hands in there to access the interior which is like a good thing and a bad thing at the same time because it's nice that it's like so shaded in there because like a swamp hut but still it's kind of hard to get move things in there you know but anyway first play feature i guess is that there is a box in there right here and you can put a carrot in it i guess it's kind of weird it's just in the corner but it, it doesn't really do anything you just put a carrot in there and I don't really like this because the carrot always falls out whenever you move it. Like what happened before in the video, it just comes out all the time. So what I usually do in storing it is I just put the carrot up here so it's out of the way. And then there's also a bed to represent the scene where like Yoda's dying, kind of dark. But you can put him on the bed like that and then you can have Luke talk to him on the side. It's very cool. And you can also, if you don't like the bed, you can kind of lift it up. So there's more space in there for minifigures to stand and stuff. But also, behind the bed, there's just a clear bottle. I guess that's just there for decor, I guess. And in the middle, there's a table with a pan. 
And I don't know if this is intentional or not, but you can lift up this middle piece and there is just like some storage underneath. I'm not sure if that's supposed to be storage, but there's just some room underneath there where you could put stuff. I don't, I don't know if that's supposed to be there, but it is there. And then there's also a fire in the corner of the hut where there is a pot. And this is another piece that falls off all the time when moving it because it's just attached by like hanging on this little grappling hook piece. Kind of annoying, so I'll put that up there too. But anyway, there's a nice fire in there and there's a few windows. And also there's like a, a gem in the ceiling, which I think is actually in the movie. There's just like a gem in the ceiling. And I think that's super cool. It's a nice detail. But anyway, I think that's all the play features in the set. Minifigure time. So the first minifigure I'm gonna talk about is Dagobah Luke. And I remember when the set came out because people were so excited about the new Luke Skywalker minifigure because this is like the first Dagobah Luke that was released since like the early 2000s. And now that's kind of been taken away because they have that new Dagobah diorama set. But I think this Luke still holds up. He has great torso printing, great like printing, and it was all unique for the time. So super awesome. And his double-sided head, yes, he has a double-sided head. Like I showed earlier, it's like his meditation face, which I think is super cool. It fits the set great and perfectly. And another thing you can do with this set is you can actually have Yoda kind of sit on his back to coach him while he's training, like in the movies. And I think it looks a little goofy, to say the least, because Yoda's a little too high on his back, but I'm at least they tried. I don't know, it, it's it's cool, it just it looks a little weird. The next minifigure is Master Yoda, or just Yoda. And I think he is not exclusive, I think this is the Yoda that they've used for a long time now. I'm not sure, the torso printing might be different, but I think the head mold is the same with the same hair printing. But super cool inclusion, I mean, it wouldn't be Yoda's hut without Yoda. And he comes with a nice stick, just a brown piece, it's, it's cool, I guess. but. Nice minifigure, just sadly not exclusive. Usually I wouldn't get excited about R2-D2, but this one is an exception. As you can see, he looks really dirty. And that's actually because this is an exclusive R2-D2 that has the mud printing from when he fell in the swamp. And I think that's super awesome and a lot better than just the boring old R2-D2 we usually get. So this R2-D2 gets a 10 out of 10 from me. Super awesome, I'm glad they switched it out for once. The set also includes just like a random Lego red snake, which I think is cool. It's not unique or anything, but nice inclusion in the set. I basically just stated a lot of pieces that came off in this set, but anyway, are there any weak parts? Yes, there are lots of weak parts. As stated before, the pot piece and the carrot piece just come off whenever you try to move it. So I just kind of don't keep them with the set. But even without those, there's so many other weak parts, especially on the back here. These little grass pieces that they use in sets, they come off so easily, like just with a bump, they all fall off. And then I'm like kind of a perfectionist, so I always look back at the instruction manual to know exactly where they go. And it's just like a problem. It's really annoying. And also this crate comes off all the time too, because it's only attached with one stud, so it's a pretty weak connection. And also, oh my gosh, I keep remembering more and more this smoke coming from the chimney, it falls off right here. Like not the whole thing falls off, but just this top part, cause it's like only connected loosely. So that falls off too. And I think that's it. There are so many weak parts in this set. So accuracy, do I think this looks accurate? Yes, I do. I think it's a very accurate set and it looks very accurate from the front, except for this random dark gray piece in the tree. But when you flip it around, just having it open like that is not very accurate, but I understand why they did it because it's a play set and you want to access the interior. So overall, I think it's a very accurate set. One more thing I wanted to point out is that the window design on the set is super cool. I really like this like circular window. It's really just attached to the side. So when you pull it off, it's not actually a circular window, but I think it's just really cool that they have that. It's a nice detail. So price per piece for this set. So even though it's not relevant today, when this was released in 2018, it retailed for $30. So the price per piece for release was about eh, 13.5 cents per piece because I had 229 pieces. And that's a little bit pricey, especially with the set not having too many big pieces, like except for maybe the bottom pieces or the base pieces. But I think it's worth it with like the number of exclusive 
figures, I guess. I mean, Yoda's not exclusive, but Luke and R2-D2 are new and exclusive for when the set came out, so I understand why it was a little more expensive, and I think it was semi-fair, but anyway, nowadays, if you want to buy it, it's like $100, so I'm not even going to do price reviews for that. That's just ridiculous, but I, I don't know why it's $100. Like, the minifigures aren't that great anymore, especially with the new Dagobah diorama out that has all the minifigures in the set in it, but better. So overall, I think the set deserves a 7 or an 8 out of 10. I think the value was okay, it's just there are so many loose parts in this set, and I just feel like that's it's kind of annoying having to always put them back on. And I feel like the minifigures have been approved on since, and there's a bunch of kind of just weird play features, but it kind of depends on how you look at it. For my case and opinion, I feel like it's more of like a 7 or 8 out of 10. So there you have it guys, that's my review of set number 7208, Yoda's Hut. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.